host universities.com. Uh, you should be very proud of yourselves and stand me up to defend your education and the education of students that follow in the coming years. Um, we're waiting for uh, everybody to assemble at the moment. We have a number of members uh, of staff uh, who will uh, have some messages for you. And at 4 p.m. Uh, or thereabouts, we will be releasing uh, balloons, black balloons, as a symbolic uh, illustration uh, of the savagery that management is currently planning uh, to visit on your university. Thank you very much. Okay, can you tell us why you're here today? Yeah, I'm here to uh, argue against the uh, job cuts at Bournemouth University. They're gonna our media school is meant to be a centre of excellence in the uh, in the country for media. Um, obviously, if these job cuts, obviously that'll be uh, be up, up in the balance sort of thing. They won't be a, a good as school. I hear they're going for more research-based teaching now, which is partly why we joined this course because of it, the practical side of it. And now they're all going for theoretical and research-based, so they won't get the same audience or the same students coming sort of thing. So you think the lecturers here that would be leaving here today uh, possess all the vocational skills you need to make it in the industry? Yeah, I'm in my uh, third year now, so I've, I've had the same teachers and demonstrators for the last three years, and they're brilliant, to be, uh, to be fair, and um, them to be made redundant over, you know, spending, misspending, it should be known as, really, uh, is foolish, I think. So it would, be, it would be a huge disruption to you. As you said, you're in the third year now. It would be a huge disruption to your education should these lecturers leave. Yeah, definitely. I'm a third year now, so I've got my dissertation and my major project to do. And if these guys either get made redundant at Christmas or at the end of the year, um, obviously at Christmas we've lost teachers and demonstrators. And if they do get told they're going to be made redundant in the summer, obviously their performance might go down because they're not as motivated to teach us anymore. So obviously I'm going to suffer and the lower years are going to suffer as well for it. Magnificent turnout today. You should be very proud of yourselves, and I hope Paul Curran is watching from his office. Uh, on the floor. Uh, and support and placards, not to say balloons, um, from the National Union. Now I'd like to introduce you to uh, John Perry, who's the regional organizer for the University and College Union for the Southwest. Uh, John, do you have some support? Yeah. Thank you very much. I'd especially like to thank, on behalf of the University and College Union, the students who have come out here today, because it's you that are the future of Bournemouth University, and your lecturers rely on you 100%. When you go out after completing your degrees and completing your learning at Bournemouth University, you'll end up in the world of work. And in the world of work, well, what we expect to be safe at work, we expect to be decently paid, but more than that, we expect to have a voice, a say, over the kind of work that we do. And that's why trade unions and universities exist. Because if we didn't exist, then the curriculum, the staffing levels, the treatment, the programmes, the quality, everything that Kevin has mentioned, will be just enforced upon by management. And so the lessons that you learn in our lecture theatres are indeed valuable lessons, but there are also lessons that are bit of a, learnt on the street. And that if you want to speak and uh, in defence of jobs, then you speak together. Uh, and change has always happened through protest, and it's a fantastic protest today, despite the appalling weather. Thank you very much. Can you tell us your position at uh, the university? Um, I'm a senior lecturer in, me in journalism. Okay, and can you tell us why you're here today? I'm here because I'm protesting at the cuts that the universities told us are happening with an almost immediate effect that were complete surprise. Okay, and uh, what was the management said to you? How, what are their reasons for cutting the staff here? Well, they've come up with some um, financial reasons that they claim um, uh, sort of uh, justify the, the cuts, but in fact, as far as one can tell, they don't appear to add up, but they seem to come completely out of the blue. There's been no warning, and therefore one can't really find them particularly credible, and they certainly don't seem to justify the kind of actions that they're taking as a result. Okay, and um, uh, uh, what, what do you expect to achieve here today? Uh, obviously... Uh, as we just heard, there was one success. Six jobs have been uh, have been kept on. Um, uh, what what do you expect to achieve? Um, 
Well, you never quite know what you're going to achieve. That's a sort of un unknown question. The only thing you can do is to say what you think and what you feel about what's being done and hope that someone's listening and hope that the consultation processes which the um, management should be going through are, well, at least begin to be followed because at the moment we've had almost no information and nothing's come down apart from very sort of uh, draconian statements from the management about what's going to happen. So I hope consultation comes out of this and some kind of uh, a start of a dialogue which may improve on the number of um, sort of jobs saved that we seem to have achieved so far. So as we just heard the speaker say then, um, uh, you're, you're just looking to have a voice. Well, we, we are part of the university. The university is a sort of collegiate, a collegiate place. I mean, we should have a voice. It's a, it's a right. And, and this obviously is, a, is not a normal protest. So clearly the fact that we're here means that we feel that the normal channels have completely broken down. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Hi there, can you tell us why you're here today? I'm here because I'm really worried about your studies and also my job. I know that's a bit sort of uh, negative, just worrying about yourself, but I do worry about the future of the university. We are, we've heard the speakers here today. Um, I'm a, I myself am a first year student. Can you, tell us how, can you tell me how this would affect me and uh, my peers? Well, my big fear is that if you're going to make cuts in teachers, then I really worry what you guys are going to be learning. You can cut certain things, you may be able to cut books, you might be able to cut expenditure on furnishings, but cutting teaching is really, really going to affect people, I think, big time. This, is a, this university is accredited uh, as a school of excellence for its media school. Uh, can you tell us how it would affect the school and um, in terms of uh, vocational practice? Well, I think the thing is, is that the university is moving away from vocationalism. It's been really successful, but if it does move away from there, you've got to question what's going to happen in the future. I don't think there's too many people with PhDs who can teach people how to go and do a very neat TV package and stuff like that. So it is a problem. I think that vocationalism is being eroded. And also with professional bodies, it's going to be very difficult for this to be a really professional place if it hasn't got people who can teach skills. And why are they making these cuts? I think it's basically to move it up the league table. The idea is that if we cut teaching staff who go and do things like vocational skills, then you can bring in people who've got research background, and that looks very good in the league tables, university league tables. What it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean yourself getting a job. Well, this is the thing. 